Hey everyone, welcome back! Welcome to another edition of Focus 3.0 Synergies. Today, we have an overkill for us. We have a build here with great survivability, but also an absolutely just unnecessary amounts of damage. If you like seeing big run and gun damage, then you'll have fun with this. This is not meant to be a max DPS, integer overflow kind of build. It is just a very basic big PB damage setup. We're going raw damage, not really any dots. You'll see hundreds of thousands to millions quite often, which generally is more than enough. I have one quick correction to make on a previous video though. In my compressor TPS video, I mentioned Laden with Cascadia Empowered, using the Arcane to proc the 400x3 Evolution 5 perk. This no longer works. DE has patched Cascadia Empowered damage from counting for the perk proc, so don't use that anymore. Anyways, did I mention this build absolutely destroys Acolytes too? Even though half the loadout kit multipliers don't even work against them here. So what are we playing with today? We had Prados with Nermon, Gyre with Uneru, Gauss with Vazarin, Hildren with Madurai. Now it's time for Frost with the Xenoric 3.0. This video was supposed to come out sooner, but I actually had to delay it for one specific reason. The absolute batshit insane energy consumption on this build. However, now that I have Emergence Dissipate, a new Operator Arcane, I'm finally able to sustain the build properly. Emergence Dissipate drops from Thrax and Angels in the Xeramon tile sets. You can also buy it and shop from Caviero in the Chrysalith if you have reached maxed rank 5 in the Syndicate. It costs 10k standing each and requires 21 to max for rank 5. This Arcane is good though, even at rank 0 or 1, you don't need max rank. So feel free to use it at lower ranks. The radius barely increases with rank and we have many grouping tools at our disposal. Rank 0 only has a 50% chance to spawn energy motes, but that's still half the odds of rank 5 and actually useful. So how does it work? Whenever you attack enemies mid void sling, you will hit them in the listed radius around you. If you repeatedly void sling and immediately cancel with attack, you can very quickly tag enemies multiple times. Every enemy successfully tagged, up to 100% chance at rank 5, will spawn an energy mode that slowly floats away. Pick up these modes to restore up to 10 energy each at rank 5. You can imagine any kind of grouping ability with quickly spamming void sling cancel attacks will refill insane amounts of energy on your frame. Now, why did I need this? Because this frost burns over 1200 energy a minute. To put it into perspective, up to this point I have only ever showcased builds at worst consuming about 600 to 700 energy. Most builds I showcase only burn about 300 to 500 a minute. I had a single one, I think it was a Protea build that burned about 800, but this is leagues above that. Xeneric regenerates 5 energy per second, or 300 a minute. Energize gives an additional 600 energy a minute. Combined, they only restore a bonus 900 energy on top of random energy orbs. I needed Emergence Dissipate to make up that extra 300 energy deficit for the Frost build to be functional. Basically, whenever the kit runs low on energy, spend a few seconds in Operator to top up Frost bar and you're good to go. Attacking, say, 10 grouped enemies, which isn't hard with grouping tools, 3 times quickly with Sling Cancel, will generate that 300 energy you need at rank 5 and that's enough to last an entire minute. Alright, let's look at that Frost build. Like I said, this is an overkill Frost setup of the highest order. If you've seen my previous Frost videos in the past few months, you probably remember I said that you either build for full strip 250 strength, or you build for Biting Frost with massive range but low strength for blanket CC and use splash weapons to kill everything, since Biting Frost isn't affected by strength. The reason being Frost does not have enough space to build 250 strength full strip and also high range at the same time. But with the advent of Focus 3.0, we can, and we still have the helmet slot open too. This is very important for the build which I'll get into later. This is a 249 strength or a 99.6% armor strip frost, achieved with growing power's 25% buff and Xenoric's hardened wellspring, which grants you 300 energy back a minute if you always have it active and a 20% strength boost. You activate hardened wellspring by double casting your one as operator. Oh, also, temporal shot is still broken and doesn't buff headshot damage at all. When will you fix this, DE? Anyways, leaving enemies with 0.4% armor remaining keeps them weak to corrosive while also letting corrosive procs cut that 0.4% down further to the point that it's nearly insignificant. The only place 0.4% or less would still matter is level 9999, but that's why I'm pairing this with a Latum today. 
A 99.6% strip on a Latum raw damage build is more than enough to kill everything in the game, be it base steel path or overguard X Miss Nox at level 9999. Xenoric 3.0 and Emergence Dissipate frees up enough slots to let us slot both Biting Frost and 205 range for a 30.75 meter freeze radius, passing through walls hard CC that lasts for 10.2 seconds with a 249 full strip build. So we get the massive range of a typical freeze frost, the near full armor strip, and also crazy crit buffs against frozen enemies with Biting Frost. The Biting Frost augment does not scale with strength and grants a modded plus 200% crit chance and crit damage to all enemies, including melee if you want to use that. We still have Rolling Guard for shield gate safety, and because Avalanche now instantly freezes enemies at the start of cast, you can shield gate very consistently. With 3 Augur mods, 2 being from our Sentinel weapon, we get 120% energy to shield conversion, which is enough for Avalanche to restore all our shields so long as we have a Decay Dragon Key equipped. I'm sure footed for obvious reasons since we're DPSing with Latum and the Incarnon mode, Energize for obvious energy problems, and Arcane Velocity to boost the fire rate of our Latum even further. It procs on crits and we're gonna be critting a lot. For the Helminth, I replaced this one with Ensnare because, well, his one is just a shittier two and his three still has some use. I chose Ensnare because it still hard CCs enemies for extended periods and lets you build Latum headshots for the Incarnon meter while not instantly killing enemies with the overwhelming damage when you freeze them. It also groups a bunch of enemies closer together for easier head tracking. But also, because Ensnare can CC Acolytes, whereas nothing on Frost Kit naturally can because Acolytes cannot be frozen, so it patches the one glaring hole on his kit. At 205 range, our Ensnare has 20.5 meter radius, which is pretty sizable, and if you really want to, yes, you can cast Ensnare on Avalanched enemies and it will still pull them together. Now remember, I said 3 Augur mods, which means you need to bring a Sentinel with Burst Laser, the only Sentinel pistol in the game to be an Augur stat stick. Normally we can slot it on our pistol, but DPS pistol setups like Latum doesn't use Augur mods. Throw whatever you want on the Burst Laser, and I would recommend using Jin as the Sentinel, since it has Reawaken as its unique precept. If it dies, it comes back 90 seconds later, essentially infinite lives like Vulpa Finals with their Devolution mods. Since set here is standard for utility, even though it doesn't do that much on this loadouts, but just leave it on. Radar and fetch like always, but we do have two important unique mods here. Primed regen procs before reawaken, allowing you up to 4 Jin lives instantly without having to wait on the 90 second cooldown when it dies. And Guardian instantly refills your shields if they break, giving you a second chance if you aren't ready to shield gate yet. It does have a 30 second cooldown though when it activates, so don't rely on it too much. Your non-pistol weapons on this build, I don't care what you use. Take a primary with Amalgam Serration for sprint speed and take a utility melee. Pretty sure the meta option these days will probably be Prados for the 30% parkour bonus. Anyways, the obvious star of the show today, Latum. I'm not gonna go into the intricacies of Latum today because I already have a video on that, so if you want a full breakdown on the evolution trees, check out that video at the top right. Things have changed a tiny bit since then, so if you have questions about Latum that are not explained in that video, then I will answer them here. Otherwise, I will just redirect you to that video. Therefore, I'm only gonna show you quickly what evolution perks I'm using on this Latum. The soul perk for Evo 1, the minus recoil for Evolution 2, the reload buff for Evolution 3 on headshots, 50% multiplicative headshot damage for Evolution 4, and the 400 times 3 base damage buff for Evolution 5 for consistent damage. Alright, let's look at the build. The first thing I want you to notice is that this is a galvanized crosshairs latum. This is intentional because Galvanize Crosshair plus Biting Frost boosts your crit chance above 100%, making your Evolution 5 passive impossible to proc if Galvanize Crosshairs is active at max stacks. In fact, even Primed Pistol Gambit already gives too much crit chance with Biting Frost and makes it impossible to proc. But that's why I use Galvanize Crosshairs. You only get the crit chance when aiming. If you don't ADS, you don't get the mod effect. Simple as that. Why does this matter? Because it lets you build overwhelming attrition's 400 times 3 stacks very quickly by just not aiming, even if Biting Frost is active on frozen enemies. Or if enemies are not frozen, you can ADS and only Galvanized Crosshairs will be active. But not Biting Frost, which keeps you under 100% crit. 
Essentially, if you need to build the perk stacks, either don't freeze the enemies, which is why we had in Snare, or just don't ADS. Once you have the stacks, they last 20 seconds and decay one by one, so you are free to ADS for maximum DPS by combining both Galvanized Crosshairs and Biting Frost for plus 520% crit chance, which pushes Latum to 136.4% crit for yellows and oranges, and that massive plus 310% crit damage boost from Prime Target Cracker and Biting Biting Frost. Biting Frost alone more than doubles the total DPS of Latum. That's how strong this augment is, but it doesn't work against Acolyte since they cannot be frozen. But that's okay, because we're using a Latum, which still does more than enough damage to destroy them, and that's also why we have Ensnare, to hold them in place and easily kill them. This is a generic corrosive heat raw damage Latum, and we're running steady hands with Deadhead to remove all the recoil on this weapon. This should be max rank, but polarity problems due to all these builds I've made previously, but 95% is also enough. If you don't want to run the Bane, I would suggest trying Prime to Fulmination. And there you go, an absolutely lethal crit Latum build, melded together with Frost and Focus 3.0 with Xenoric. If you need energy from Energize and Xenoric not being enough, cast and snare on some enemies, mash your Void Sling and attack together to spawn tons of energy molts for Frost. Don't be too close to the enemies as your operator though, else you'll pick them up. Fetch and Vacuum will only work on energy modes when you're in frame, so long as your operator is far enough away, Frost will instantly suck them all up when you switch back to him. Relish as you overkill your enemies with a full crit Latum nuke. If this is your first time watching, feel free to leave a like or better yet subscribe. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. 79.5% of you are not subscribed. I'm trying my best to get you new information out always as soon as possible like I've done with covering the new Angels of Zeraman update. Stick around if you want to see interesting memes and builds on a nearly daily basis. Don't miss out on any of that, do you? That'll be it for this video. Thank you all for watching and see you all next time.